So our last speaker has been working for the Council for Biotechnology Information Japan or CBIJ as a Secretary General since 2018. CBIJ was established in 2001 as an affiliation of the CropLife International with missions to promote science-based risk assessment and to communicate factual and scientific information on biotechnology to stakeholders. Before uh, Mr. Kumagai um, joined CBIJ, he worked for Procter & Gamble, the world's largest consumer goods company, as a regulatory manager for 25 years in Japan. He was res responsible for laundry dish detergents and paper diapers and familiar with chemical risk assessment in environment and human. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us welcome Dr. Yoshiharo Kamagai, uh, my old time friend, uh, Dr. Kamagai, please. You can take the floor. Thank you very much for your kind uh, introduction. So let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, 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 sir, we can, thank you. Okay, uh, hello, my name is Yoshiharu Kumagai. Uh, as uh, already I was introduced, I am working for uh, Council for Biotechnology Information Japan, here after call as CBIJ. As a Secretary General, I am pleased to have uh, this kind of opportunity to share consumer acceptance of GM foods in Japan with you. Firstly, uh, let me introduce CBIJ. CBIJ is an affiliate of the CropLife International established in October 2001 in Tokyo. CBIJ has four member companies, BASF Japan, Bayer Crop Science, Corteva, composed of Dow AgroScience Japan, Corteva AgriScience Japan, and Shinjeta Japan. Our missions are to promote science-based risk assessment in regulatory licensing of GMOs, and to communicate factual and scientific information on biotechnology to stakeholders such as regulators, academia, consumer associations, and media. Before talking about consumer acceptance of GM foods, let me briefly share our four major communication activities. The first one is scholarship program for high school students. This is to support high school student activity to promote acceptance, understanding of agricultural biotechnology. We are awarding 1 million Japanese yen as maximum to the first prize winner. These are the pictures of the award ceremonies so far. The second one is screening event of the Food Evolution Fellow. This is a film uh, featuring all the ways science has been used and abused in public discourse surrounding the GM foods. Developed by Academ Academy Award nominee uh, Scott Hamilton uh, Kennedy. We have conducted 17 times of screening event in three years. This is a picture of the first screening event. We also developed an educational slide for teachers. This covers all aspects of GMOs, such as contributions, technology, GM crops, usage, safety, regulatory systems. About 400 downloads were made so far. We also developed its English version. Thus, if you would like to have it, please let me know. We are also 
continuously increasing contents in our website. Last year, about 250 thousands of people visited our website and 44,000 person visited in a month at maximum. Now uh, I'll share the today's main topic, consumer acceptance of GM foods in Japan. We have conducted a consumer survey on acceptance of GM foods in 2017. It's a nationwide survey via online. Its target is women in their 20s to 50s. Its key findings are the level ads GM free and TV program are key factors to form their image of GM foods. Education of consumers would help improve their acceptance of GM foods. Then let me talk how we come to the key findings. This is a show what image of GM foods consumers have. As you can see, more than 50% of the panelists have a negative image of GM foods. And the image of GM foods get more negative with age. Why do consumers have a negative image of GM foods with age? This shows source of information that contribute to consumers' image of GM foods. As you can see, consumers get information about GM foods mainly from labeling of not genetically modified, I mean GM free and TB. Then why consumers have a negative image with the label and TB? This shows the reason why consumers have a negative image about people who have a scary or bad image. The most common reason is not natural or artificial. The second one is not know well or lack of information. And the third one is concerns about health or environment, then followed by deliberately, I mean, uh, intentionally labeled as GM free, image of genetically modified and information from media. This suggests Information from label and media contribute to create negative image of GM foods in consumers. Interestingly, uh, consumers feel negative image on GM foods when they see label of GM free. The label may mislead consumers as if GM is not good, thus GM should be avoided. Previously, I questioned why do consumers have a negative image of GM foods with age? This would be because people get more exposed to negative information on GM foods with age through GM free label and media. About people who have no particular image, the most common reason is not know well or lack of information. This is same as the second, this is same as the second reason of people who have a scare or bad image. Then not interested follows. This suggests education or communication with consumers about GM foods would contribute to increase positive image of GM foods. In the survey, then we shared information about GM foods with panelists as showing here and asked how their image of GM foods is changed. Because of time, time constraint, let me move on how the image of GM foods was changed after hearing this kind of information. 
as you can see, after hearing information about GM foods, about 50% of panelists got more positive image than before. This would lead to our second key findings. I mean, education of consumers would help improve their acceptance of GM foods. In the future, in Japan, there are two important events occur. One is change in GM food labeling. Currently, the food are controlled under IP handling and when their unintended contamination of GM foods is less than 5%, the food can be claimed GM free. However, from 2023, the criteria is changed to not detect it. I mean, uh, lower than detection limit. With the change, it is expected much less product would label as GM free. The second key event is genome editing food comes in the market. As we heard from Dr. Ezra yesterday, high GABA tomato is already in the market and genome edited increased fillet fish, sea bream is also already in the market. Mm. While this business is not so big right now, but it is expected more genome edited food come in the market and consumers would be more familiar with new breeding technologies. Now, I am very interested in how would the consumer's acceptance of GM foods be changed? From this survey, we have learned the importance of communication with, with stakeholders. Once they hear or understand, most would become reassured and accept new technologies such as GM and genome editing. That's concluded my presentation. Thank you for your attention.